In this video I'm going to talk about the parameters associated with a sinusoid, the amplitude, frequency and phase. And I'm also going to talk about angular velocity or angular frequency associated with the sinusoid. I'm going to make use of this animation which is available on a website and I'll provide the link to the website in the description part of the YouTube video. But what we'll see when I run this animation is this red dot here will rotate around a circle at a particular speed which is referred to as an angular speed or angular velocity. And when I run it, what you're going to see over on the right hand side is a plot or a trace of the red dot's height as it evolves over time. So when I run this, what we're basically seeing is a trace of the height of the red dot as time changes. And this produces a, a sinusoidal waveform that we can see over here. Now if I reset and run that animation, and I'll just pause it again, Effectively what we're doing is calculating the height, and the height is based on the angle that we can see here. So this red arc is associated with an angle, and the angle in this case is 172.8 uh, degrees. And that has a corresponding value in radians of 3.02. And to calculate the exact height of the red dot, we take the sine of that angle, and in this case it's given as a value of 0 0.13, and that corresponds to the height of this red dot. And I've shown the uh, axis here, so this is the height axis, and we've got a value, maximum value of 1, a minimum value of minus 1, and this current height here is 0 0.3, so it's just off 0. Now, as I run that animation, I can change things like the frequency. So, for example, if I were to uh, move the slider to the right here, and change that up to 1 hertz and reset it, we can see that the rate at which the red dot moves around the circle increases, but also the frequency associated with the sinusoid also increases. Um, now, while that is plotting, what we can see is the time values being plotted uh, as well, and we can see how long it took for each cycle of the sinusoid to be produced. So in this case it took one second to produce one cycle of the sinusoid, and that corresponds to a frequency of 1 hertz. But the other thing to notice is up the top is that we're also showing the angle associated with the position of the red dot shown at the top. and while that red dot is moving through uh, or around the circle, it undergoes 2 pi radians of a revolution um, over one second. And this is referred to as the angular frequency. And angular frequency in this case is 2 pi radians per second. If I was to adjust the frequency down here, and we'll go back to 0 0.5, and I reset and play the animation again, we can see that in this case that we went through pi radians over one second. So maybe let me reset that again and show you. So after exactly one second we've undergone pi radians of a revolution in terms of the position of the red dot. And the, the frequency then of rotation of this red dot is referred to as pi radians per second. So when we're talking about the frequency of sinusoids, we can talk about it in terms of two things. We can talk about it in terms of frequency in hertz, but also equivalently uh, frequency in terms of radians per, uh, radians per second. The next thing I'll show you is the amplitude parameter. Uh, we can adjust the amplitude associated with the sinusoid by moving this slider here. So if I was to move this down to say 0 0.6 and reset and play the animation, what you'll see is that the radius of the circle is now reduced and that has a corresponding reduction in the amplitude of the sinusoid. So the if you look over this axis here we can see now that the radius of that the radius of the circle is now 0 0.5, or sorry, 0 0.6, and that corresponds to the actual amplitude of the sinusoid that we see over here. The last parameter to discuss is the phase offset, and to demonstrate that I'm going to adjust the parameters here. I'm going to change the frequency down to its lowest value of uh, 0 0.1 Hz. I'll adjust the amplitude back up to 1, and I'm going to change the phase offset to being an angle of 1.6 radians and that corresponds to an angle of 90 degrees so what I expect to see um, 
is that the red dot, the position of the red dot will start up where my mouse is. Uh, whereas normally in all the other examples the red dot was located down around this area here. So let me just show you that. So we can see that the red dot started here and that the starting position corresponded to an angle of 90 degrees, uh, well roughly 90 degrees and exactly 1.6 radians. So let me just show you that again. And if I was to adjust the phase offset, um, so let's make it maybe something a little bit larger. Uh, we'll make it a value of yeah, 5.8 radians. So 5.8 radians would be roughly this angle. The, the red dot would be positioned roughly around this region here. So when I start the animation, I expect this, the red dot now to start off at this location. And we can see that happening there. Okay. Um, now it's important to note that the phase offset, um, if we were to move this phase offset say up to um, 6.3 radians, that 6.3 radians corresponds to um, 2 pi, uh, an angle of 2 pi radians. And the red dot in that case would start back at this location here where my, where my mouse is pointing. So if I was to reset and play the animation, it starts off here. And the overall shape of the waveform that's producing is the same as if I have a phase offset of zero. So if I run that again, we're producing the same shaped sinusoidal waveform. And that's an important um, thing to note, is that a phase offset of um, 2 pi gives you the same, the same starting position as a phase offset of zero. So let me just adjust that back. And that would also be true if I was to add another 2 pi onto that. So if I was to, mo to move that to 12.6 radians. I'll run the animation again. You'll see that the starting position doesn't change and the overall shape of the waveform doesn't change. So maybe just to reiterate that point one final time, if I was to adjust the frequency as well and uh, play the animation, you can see the starting position is still zero. And maybe I'll just use a different angle as well. So if I was to shift that angle back to um, 0 0.7 radians, that would correspond to a starting position of the red dot roughly around this region where my mouse is pointing. There we go, we can see that happening. Now if I was to add 2 pi to 0 0.7, that would, that would give me a value of 7 radians. So I'll move this up to 7 radians. Now because um, I've added 2 pi onto this angle, that will produce a, a starting point which is the same as an angle of um, 0 0.7 radians. So when I reset and play this animation, I expect to see the same shaped waveform being produced. There we go, you can see that. So that's an important note about the um, the phase offset associated with uh, a sinusoid. So at this stage we've looked at the parameters of the sinusoid and also discussed angular velocity or angular speed. And what I'd like to do now is just take a closer look at the mathematics that represent uh, a sinusoidal waveform. And to do that I'm going to change the phase back down to zero and also adjust the frequency back down to 0 0.5. And if I reset and run that animation, um, what we'll see is, um, just to remind you, uh, we'll see that we're determining the height of the red dot by evaluating this expression here, which is uh, 1, and the 1 corresponds to the amplitude, uh, which in this case is 1, by sine times the angle. Now, this angle is changing at a constant rate, and um, the rate at which it's changing is in this case, well, it's pi uh, radians after one second. So the angular frequency in this case is pi radians per second. Now we can rewrite this expression here in more general terms um, as follows. So I could say that this is a times the sine of omega. And omega represents angular frequency. Uh, multiplied by t. So in this case our angular frequency is pi. So I could rewrite this expression in this case as being 
1 times the sine of pi by t. And if you were to evaluate this expression for different values of t, you would then get a plot of the sinusoidal shape. So let's just do that. Um, if we were to look at time t equal to 0, and we were to substitute t equal to 0 in this expression, we'd have the sine of 0 by pi gives you 0. So the sine of 0 gives you 0, and that's that point here. If we're then to look at time t equal to 0 0.5 seconds and substitute it into this equation, then we're getting the sine of pi divided by 2. Now the sine of pi divided by 2, or the sine of 90 degrees, is a value of 1, and that gives us this point. Uh, if we take one more example and substitute t for a value of 1, and then we'll be getting the sine of pi, and the sine of pi, or 180 degrees, is also a value of 0. So we could substitute t for different values, not only those three that I use, but for lots of different time values, and we would get a plot of our sinusoidal waveform. Now, the, the last thing that I could add into this uh, expression is the phase offset. And the phase offset just changes the initial value of the amplitude. So let's just um, show you that in action. Um, okay. Let's change that clear. Great. Um, now, I can change my expression to include phase offset if I write it out like this. Sine of omega t plus phi. And if we were to change the um, parameters down here, if it was just the, uh, the phase offset, so let's say I was to substitute a value of 0 0.7 and uh, to leave the frequency and the amplitude the same, that would become 1 times sine of pi by t plus 0 0.7. And then what we'd do is at time t equal to 0, this part would become 0. And we, so at time t equal to 0, we'd have the sine of 0 0.7. And the starting point would be up here at 0 0.7. And you can try that out yourself um, by um, running this simulation. And if you change or tick this checkbox, you can see the calculations being shown over here. Um, now I can see that's just gone off screen, but if you run the simulation yourself, you'll see all the calculations being shown. Uh, and really, this is showing the sine of 3.96 over here, which is the same as the value up here. So you can you can see that information as you uh, uh, if you run the simulation anyway. Um, but as I re run this and pause it, you can see the the values for time. There's time t equal to two. The frequency is 0 0.5. Um, uh, the, the angular frequency will be 2 pi times 0 0.5, which in this case will give you a value of pi, so pi radians per second. But you can see all those calculations being evaluated for different values of time. Now, probably worth you doing this yourself. So um, create uh, a general expression for a sinusoid, change the frequency. Uh, amplitude and phase values and sketch out your own sinusoidal plots. Anyway, hope this presentation helped a little bit with your understanding of sinusoidal parameters and thanks for your attention.